You good? Okay. Yeah, um, I was just changing my name. Okay. What's up, everybody? Episode 21 here. Um, one of my favorite uh, episodes that we do. This is the dealer's choice episode where uh, we each bring a bottle to the table to talk about and taste. We don't tell each other beforehand. Total surprise. Um, you know, there's lots of texts going back and forth the whole day talking about what everybody's going to bring. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to be fun to see what, what we do. We got the crew here, DR and Seggy in, in the building. What's up? Hey, how's it going? Rich, looks like you got a haircut. I did get a haircut. Um, I did a uh, home cut. So Quarantine cut? Quarantine cut. Uh, it was just did getting you too the floby. You ordered a floby, didn't you? Dude, if I could find one of those things on eBay, I totally would have. <laughs> I would have done that. Good take. Dude, Good it's take. So, it's so long, man. It's <laughs> crazy. Like it's almost as long as my son's hair. Dude, it's it's ridiculous. Um, and uh, you know, I, I I just got to a point where I was like, I got to do it, so I did it. Nice. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited for tonight. Um, obviously, we're taping this. We're going to post it in a day or two. But, uh, you know, we get to uh, taste some fun stuff. Definitely, probably something that we haven't had on any of our other episodes is my guess. I mean, I feel like that's where we go each time with this, right? Yep, this is a new one for me. All right, I'm excited. So should we just jump into it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah who, wants to, who wants to kick it off? Um, I mean, I, I don't mind off since uh, uh, I'm actually taking a little bit of a uh, a uh, curveball with this. As you can see the shirt that I'm wearing here. It is Groom June 2012. That nice. is eight years. You know, our eight year anniversary is coming up, but this is today, May 28th is the one year or the nine year anniversary of me asking Sarah to marry me. So nice. what'd she say tonight is a bottle of the uh, Imperial Moet uh, because this is Sarah's favorite bottle of champagne. So here we go. Nice. Dude, that's some of the best value for quality champagne you can buy. Oh, wait, bye. That's class, man. She's standing over there, she had no idea I was doing this, so I'm going to invite her to get a glass as well, obviously. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if you just sit here and drink by just myself. Crush the entire bottle. That's the season of my life. Yours. <laughs> You're awesome and all, but I'm just going to drink all this myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the birthday episode we did with you, Brits. I bought you a <laughs> bottle. And then I drank it. Here you go, sweetie. But seriously, though, the, the Moet stuff is. Yeah. Some of the best value because it's not crazy overpriced. Um, the Imperial and the White Star are both mm -hmm. pretty affordable for, you know, a solid, really, really solid French champagne. So redundancy is saying French champagne. Um, and champagne. But we can explain that so, a little later. Yeah. 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 Mm. Cheers. Hopefully that was Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I think you're absolutely right, saying for a long time I was on um, I was on a, a Vuv kick, um, and then Sarah had mentioned sort of offhand that she preferred the Moet, which you know after nine years of marriage I feel like is something I should have known by now. Um, uh, so we got her a bottle of the Moet for Mother's Day, and was really impressed with it. Not the not the Imperial Brut, I think just the regular Brut. Um, not uh, uh, so. I was really impressed with it, I, and I agree. I think for the price point, um, you know, and you can, you know, there, you can find it's deals, you can find specials. I got this bottle at Costco, so you know, it's it's out there. You can find really good deals and discounts, and uh, this is dollar for dollar. I agree. One of the one of the really uh, good champagnes. What was the price on it? Do you remember? I got this at Costco. I think it was like forty four ninety nine. Yeah. Good price. Sub yeah. fifty bucks for that for the Imperial and the White Star usually are sub fifty and Vuv is close to that range. Usually fifty fifty nine ninety nine I think is is usually where Vuv is 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 about. But don't yeah. sleep on the Vuv Rosé. That Vuv 
The Vouv 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 sparkling rosé. Rose. Rose. We're not talking oh, about the rosé. Although the Moet apparently makes a really good rosé, sparkling rosé as well. Uh, I feel I'm like, not been onto that yet. I feel like sparkling rosé is going to have to make an appearance in my my weekend arsenal uh, coming up. I feel like it's going to be great weather. I feel you know. I feel like a you know a nice sparkling rosé is is definitely in order. I love how you say it. It's going to be great weather. Like it's any different than any of the weekends you've had in the last <laughs> six months living in Los Angeles. <laughs> fair enough. Okay, fair. Uh, there, there are stretches of not so great weather. Sometimes it's overcast. I mean, you lived here, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I've not done this a whole lot with champagne, so I'm just going to kind of like throw out there, like it's a little, you know, obviously it's citrusy, a little floral. Maybe some honey, but like a little, like a little grapefruit, sort of that citrusiness. And obviously, you know, champagne, particularly this brute, is just bright acid. You know, you get it right here on yeah. that palate. Bone dry? <laughs> What's that? Bone dry or is it? Oh yeah, bone dry, bone dry. Mm. Yeah, it just uh, cleans all that out, but it finishes with that nice acidity, bright, crisp, really good. Yeah, That's you can awesome. Drink this all day. This is good for brunch. I wouldn't put any orange juice in this. This is just this is standalone. Don't dirty it up with that stuff. Just yeah. enjoy it straight up. I don't mess with mimosas anymore. I'm just just give me the champagne. Like if we're gonna I'm, drink, let's drink. You know, I don't need to. I don't need to dilute this. You know, like we've been. We've been saying on every episode, it's art in a bottle, right? I don't need to pour orange juice into this art. You know, I want to just enjoy this, this champagne, or if it's sparkling wine, or if it's prosecco or cava. You know, I just I want to enjoy that. I don't need the I don't need the extra sugar and stuff from the orange juice. So the first the first that I knew anything about sparkling wine or champagne was I went to Schramsberg in Napa. Great, really great sparkling wine. Um, the difference for those of you that don't know is that to be champagne, it has to be made in France. So um, anything from Napa or the United States, whatever is uh, sparkling wine. Is it Prosecco in Italy? Prosecco in Italy and Cava in Spain. Oh, okay. Right. Um, and so if you get a chance to go see uh, uh, you know, a champagne house, it's really interesting because the way that the champagne ages is in the bottles, not in the casks like wine does, but there's a sediment involved. And so they have to by hand go through and rotate the bottles and then tilt the bottles as well. So as they're aging and they've got these guys that, you know, they've got music, or whatever, and they just choo, 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 choo. we're talking thousands of bottles, uh, you know, at its, uh, you know, for a particular vintage. So it's a really interesting intricate process that if you've not seen, I highly recommend Schramsberg is a great spot to check it out in Napa. Yeah, it's, it is a good spot for sure. I'm, I'm a fan. I've got a bottle of their rosé in my fridge right now. Ready to be enjoyed it's this weekend. Not Schramsberg either. Yeah. yeah. I was, uh, I was going to say, uh, I don't think that's going to make it past the weekend in your refrigerator. <laughs> Might not make it past tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Leo stopped napping, so I might have it tonight. <laughs> well, speaking of what you're having tonight, Segi, why don't you dive into it? All right. So um, I didn't know anything about this vineyard um, until I heard about it from the two of you guys. And... I was sent a link and, and the text along with the link said, order this. And it was from <laughs> Brits. So when I get something like that from Brits, I do as I'm told. And what I'm pouring is a little bit of the oh, Blackbird. Nice. nice. So this is the 2012. I think it's the 2012 Arise. Yeah. Yeah which is uh, it's their proprietary red wine. It's 58% Merlot, 32% Cab Franc, and 10% Cab Sauvignon. And it's, this is really good. And it's probably on the lower end of their price points on Blackbird. Um, but just on the nose, you get a lot of the standard, um, the standard 
black black fruits. You get a lot of some tobacco, a little bit of that leather. Yeah, just on the finish, a lot of that, a lot of that black cherry, a lot of cherry. And honestly, ever since Lori from Falcor mentioned soda, I'm now tasting that so much more in cola. Yeah, some yeah, cola, sorry. I'm now tasting that so much more in some of these wines that I'm having, especially the blends. Right. Um, but man, this is a really, really easy wine to drink. Uh, I think I have one more bottle left after this. I think I bought like six or seven of them when you sent me that link. But Blackbird Vineyards, Arise, really solid wine, not, not expensive at all. And um, like we've been saying on all these dealer choice and uh, the um, grocery store ones, you know, this is a bottle of wine you could bring to a dinner or to your friends, if you're just hanging out or just crack open on a Tuesday, you know, it's it's gonna be enjoyed by a cab drinker, uh, a Pinot drinker, Merlot drinker. There's there's something in it for everyone. So big fan of this stuff. If I could tell a quick story. First time that I had that wine was with Brits. In We were doing a show in Napa and Brits, Segi, uh, you and I were walking, there's a bunch of us, and Brits was like, hey, why don't you guys come with, uh, come with me? I'm going to go meet Steve Gage. And, and I went back to the wine. venue. And you, yeah, you bailed. You went to the venue, and I went with Brits, and he busted out that, and I think a couple, of, and their cab, and maybe something else, yeah. um, and told us, I think, I think the, the label is an homage to the song Blackbird singing in the Dead of mm-hmm. Night, as if it was like a staff, you know, not exactly staffed out, but that way, Blackbird, they bit of a dead of night, whatever it is. Um, so I, I think, right, right, Brits? Did he yeah. tell us that? Yeah. Yeah, they're very uh, music centric. Yeah, it's so it's a really, it's a fun bottle. And I totally agree with you, Say, something that, uh, you know, you could take to any event and every wine drinker is going to find something that they like in it. Well, also, what I like about them is they'll do sort of these surprise sales every once in a while, too. And, you know, their wines are, you know, generally in the higher end but when they do these sales you can get really great value and you know when you see those um you just got to stock up and you know i think people again who are discovering wines or who are into wines but they're like hey i don't want to spend a million dollars you know you look for those opportunities to buy and you can buy really good wine at great prices like when i sent you that link i was like dude you're never gonna these prices are amazing um, you know, and you're getting them for a fraction of what they normally cost. So when you see those prices, you just stock up and, and, and buy. Um, yeah, this you know. one, this one retails for 40. And I think when you sent me the link, it was heavily discounted from that. So, I mean, that's crazy, crazy value. Yeah. I mean, some of the rosés, you know, I think it was, a uh, you know, 25 or $30 rosé and it was $10 a bottle. Um, you know, and you're, you're paying that for, you know, six, yeah, yeah. Six dollars a bottle. And you I mean, what do you, if you go to a grocery store, what are you buying for six bucks? You're, you're buying like cupcake, no offense. Um, if you, that, I mean, is there a six dollar bottle of rosé at the grocery store? There might not be. I don't, I, I don't know. Um, uh, Paraval makes uh, a, an, a lesser expensive bottle. It's Moonlight and, Sarah, what's the Maraval? Midnight and Roses, okay. and it's a Trader Joe's for I think eight ninety nine. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, so but it's not it's not the same caliber as what we're talking about here for sure. Side sidebar: um, Whispering Angel just mm-hmm. released a new um, new rosé that's lower priced. Um, I think it's like seventeen or eighteen bucks, and it's called the Palm by Whispering Angel, and it's really solid. It's it's not as good as Whispering Angel, but man, for the price, it's it's, it's really so solid. I'll be. You can't go wrong with Whispering Angel, and that is, you know, if you're, you know, watching this and you're in Europe, that's sort of the, you know, go to uh, when you're when you're overseas. That Whispering Angel is, uh, I feel like it's everywhere, um, and then you know, along with you know other things from Provence um, that Anything uh, from Provence. Just pop up. I mean, yeah, I mean, 
you know, when we were talking to Lori, Lori was talking about, you know, they modeled their rosé after a French style. And, you know, if you're modeling after that style, it's most likely from Provence. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so speaking of Europe, good segue for me. Nice. So I didn't go, I didn't go California. I didn't go North America. I'm, I'm going, I'm going straight from the motherland of Italy uh, for today. So we are doing a 2014 uh, Etna Rosso um, from Gambino. So, nice. Dude, that. Etna Rosso is your jam. Yeah. Sicilian. Awesome. Uh, you know, they're just making some great wines. I'll read a little about it uh, from the bottle. This wine is produced with Norello Mescalese grapes. I probably butcher that. Um, planted on volcanic soil at 800 meters above sea level and aged in huge oak barrels. So um, if you know anything about Sicily and where a lot of the grapes are grown there, it's, it's all, you know, there's a ton of volcanoes um, so it's uh, volcanic soil, a really interesting place to grow grapes and just a great region for wine. Um, so this is, this is a fun bottle. Um, price point, you know, this wine is probably 30 bucks. Um, I don't remember the exact pricing, but it was in that, you know, 28 to $30 range. Um, you know, it's, it's from Europe. So alcohol is going to be on the lower side. It's 13, five, which is, you know, for a red wine like this is probably, you know, on the, you know, average to lower average, uh, as far as alcohol content. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's what I went with a little, little curveball there. Uh, a quick aside to, to that. I remember you told me once, if you ever see an Etna Rosso on a wine list, order it because it's going to be vastly underpriced and it, the flavor and the taste and the quality of the wine is going to be incredible. Yeah. I remember you telling me that several years ago. Because you know, sometimes you go, you'll go to, you know, restaurants and let's just say if it was only, you know, Italian wine during an Italian restaurant and it's, you know, um, I would say, you know, I probably of, you know, Wines from North America to, um, you know, French wines, Italian wines, Spanish wines, I would put, you know, obviously domestic, French, Italian, and then Spanish wines, you know, sort of in that order for me as far as what, what I know. Um, so I'm still, I still have a lot to learn about Italian wines. Um, but one thing I know is when I'm in a restaurant where we all know what the markups are on, on the wines in a restaurant. You're going to get great value uh, specifically with that Edna Rosa. So that's, that's where I tend to go a lot in, uh, in Italian restaurants. So what do you smell in there? So this is, um, this smells old world. I will tell you that off the bat. I mean, look at the color on it. It is dark. Oh, great. We've yeah. done this enough now that I can recognize like good color through the computer screen. Yeah. So it's if got that's volcanic soil. It's gonna it's gonna be really old. It's got that chalky um, sort of nose to it. It's got really you got the dark dark red fruits, um, a little smoky, which definitely gives it that you know. And it's that you know uh, European style. Light on the tannins, uh, decent amount of acidity on on the on the finish. Um, you know, definitely dark red fruits, not super bright. Um, it's a really good drinking wine. I mean, weather's nice; it's warm outside. Sometimes people don't love to drink reds. I could sit outside and have this wine during the day and not feel you know, sort of cumbersome in drinking it. It's, it's, it's a really nice, beautiful sipping wine. Um, it could pair with a lot of things. I don't necessarily need it with food to drink it, but I could, and I could think of multiple things it'd be great with, um, including like, you know, a really good carbonara, you know, something with some, you know, 
bacon and you know just rich cream and that would be the shit with this kid show um kid show. <laughs> I gotta say, I mean, drinking wine. <laughs> of all of all the different wine regions, you know, I feel like I have a, a decent grasp on the domestic wines. And um, having worked in a French restaurant for a long time in grad school, I got a pretty good idea of French wines. I have like zero knowledge of Italian wines. And anytime, you know, we're we're together at an Italian restaurant, I kind of look to you and, and Luganville because. Bob Luganbill is very much uh, a fan of the Italian wines. So I look to you guys to kind of lead me because I'm so clueless when it comes to Italian wines. And I think I need to make that a point um, this year or any year coming up where we have income to really dive into Italian wines and, and kind of learn the, in, you know, the intricacies of, of the different blends and the different grapes and, I mean, there's so many different, you know, Italian grapes that I've just, you know, I don't even think I've had all of them. So that's, it's going to be a fun learning experience uh, whenever I dive into that. Do you remember that? I'll join um, you on that, Dick. I think, I think kind of the same thing. Like I know, I know something about domestic wines. I know very little about French wines and I know almost nothing about Italian wines. Yeah. Uh, I'm other than, like, gift I've gotten. Yeah. I'm in for that. Do you guys remember that um, that New Year's where we did the show in Orange County, the matinee, and then we went and we had dinner uh, that night? Tin Roof. At Tin Roof, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And we, you know, I brought out all those bottles and we tried that really great Sassetti Barolo. Do you remember yep. that? It was Barolo. the one. It was a, like it was a Brunello de Montalcino. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I ordered really a bunch of those. Awesome. Yeah, it was a Brunello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah, I've yeah. ordered a bunch of those since then because Jamie was like, as soon as she had it, she was like, "This wine is incredible," and it was really early in the night too, so it wasn't just like we were all hammered. It was like, "Oh my god, it's the best wine I've ever had." It's like you're drinking water, but um, no, we've we've ordered a bunch of those since, and it's definitely a household favorite for sure. Yeah, that's a that's a go to for me. It's a gr great wine, I think. Was it a 2012? Kind of one? like the checkered label. It's, uh, like it's the name is in cursive. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. I I have a bottle over here. Let me go grab. It. Yeah. Beep. Don't open it, Tiggy. <laughs> well, we we've had some fun discoveries. That was one, um, you know, that that I I brought to the table and and we all liked. But you know. Uh, when we were in France and we discovered the uh, Chateau Lagarde, that was the uh, the other um, major discovery. Were you with us that, or did you had you left already, Dr. When we uh, from uh, that New Year's? No, no, no. When we were in France and we went to the wine shop. Oh yeah, yeah. no, I was um, extremely hungover from a different uh, from the night before and didn't. Um, wouldn't have enjoyed the wine, so I didn't go. Okay. Oh, you would have. Dude. Well, I, so I was just saying that whatever, the, whatever the activity was the night before, I was still recovering from. And, and like the thought of drinking a bunch of like really heavy, amazing red wines was not sitting well with me. <laughs> I was saying, talking about like different discoveries, especially ones that we've made in Europe. So obviously the Sassetti was one, but the uh, Chateau Lagarde when we were at that wine shop in, uh, in Paris. And dude, that, that Chateau Lagarde in France sells for like eight euros a bottle. Yeah, it's not expensive. It's and both of us, you know, as soon as we had it, we're like, dude, we gotta, we gotta buy as much of this as we can. Yeah. It's great wine. And I, I think you and I both spent, uh, time scouring to try and find it here and bought whatever we could find. And again, wasn't super expensive. It's just, you know, it's great. And I think, you know, a lot of the problem tends to be, and it's it's easier for you, Seth, because you're closer to the East. But, you know, a lot of the- Like in the middle. French and Italian of imports- the, Of the East. They come to, the, well, you're a lot closer than I am. The Middle East, get it? Yeah, I got it. Um, but, you know, New York and New Jersey and, you know, the, the East Coast gets a lot of the, you know, imports, um, you know, and not all of them make their way out here. 
Uh, same way as, you know, on the West Coast, you know, you, you, you look at the wine lists and they're scattered with, you know, small production, you know, California, Washington and Oregon wines. And that necessarily doesn't happen, you know, in the Midwest and on the East Coast. So, you know, I think uh, the cool thing is that, you know, you get the chance to, uh, to check those out when you're on the East Coast. And, you know, we don't always get them on the West Coast. So when I find them, um, or if I like something, I dig all over the place. And a lot of times I wind up ordering them from the East Coast. I'll find a wine shop that, or an importer that sells. And, you know, I got obsessed, um, what was it? Maybe six months ago with um, this Portuguese wine. And I just hunted until I found someone domestically that would sell it. And then as soon as I found it, I was like, all right, how much of it can I buy? You what know. was it? We'll send that out. Let's order some of that and do uh and do one of these with that stuff. Yeah, it's 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 great stuff. Um, again, not expensive either. Z no, absolutely nothing about Portuguese wine. Yeah, not expensive. So, but it was it was Start. really good. You should talk to uh, Andy at Schweiger because he's got those connects in Portugal, so he might be able to get you a, a palate. Of that as one a, as night or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, we should uh, we should do that. We like that Andy guy. We need to do another episode with them. That'd be fun. Although I, I think we might have tried each one. We're gonna have to revisit. Need to revisit something. I'm fine with that. Um, or yeah. we just have them on to do a dealer's choice. We should. Yeah. That. Sure. that would be. Or fun. I think I think we always wipe a bottle of. <laughs> the thing for me, it's it's always interesting to see what the winemakers like to drink, you know, because I I don't I don't imagine that you know if you own a vineyard and you you know been doing this for a long time, I don't think you're drinking your wine every single night, right? Because you have a very refined palate and you need to constantly be trying new things and all this stuff. So I'd like to know what they're drinking. Like, what yeah. is your go-to? What's your Tuesday night wine? Because yeah. you're probably not opening your own stuff because, you know, you kind of hold that as up here and you want to try something else to familiarize yourself with, with the region and all that stuff. So I love getting the winemakers in on the, on the dealer's choice. Like every time Gage has joined us, he's always bringing these cool wines and it's like, really interesting and field even right like yeah what i think was cool about tonight is that we we each brought something from a different continent well a different country region i guess yeah absolutely italy and france being on the same continent i get it <laughs> for now you don't know what's gonna happen for now a lot of volcanoes in in italy we already talked about that a lot at Narosa, yeah mount etna um but dude, I, the Moet is really, really solid. I'm a huge Moet fan. As I Can't continue go to drink, I'm going to say what I really enjoy about it is that it's not, it, it, it is drier, more minerally. It's not super sweet like a lot of champagnes can be. You know, you get a little bit of that. For me, I, I have adverse reactions to sugar. So like just all that sugary champagne sweetness can be overwhelming. But this one, like Sarah came in and refilled my glass as we were doing this. And I got to say, it's, it's going down easy, nice and dry, nice and minerally, some peach, yeah. some citrusiness, but not super overwhelming. It's really good. You know what it's making me think of is that, you know, normally when we're on the road and we go out, you know, whether even if it's at an airport or, um, you know, it's the, you know, the first beverage of the night, I normally start with a glass of sparkling. White Claw. <laughs> Not my so, so Dude, see, drinking the law when you're drinking the claw. No, I, I, I you know, you, I, I've, I've noticed that and I've started to gravitate towards that with you guys, you know, when we're on the road. Like, I wouldn't normally start with a glass of sparkling, but for some reason, you know, when we're on the road and it's, you know, the three of us plus whoever, you know, that, that first glass is something sparkling. It's kind of fun. It feels, it sets the table. It does. It feels like it, okay. I'm switching gears here. I'm now into, I'm, I'm hanging. This is social time. This isn't, you know, it feels, it feels like that changeover occurs when you, 
when you have a glass of sparkling. Without being too heavy, like, uh, you know, if I, if you went cocktail, like an old fashioned, which I also yeah. enjoy, but sometimes you start off with that, that almost sets the night on the wrong foot. <laughs> multiple of those sets the night on a, if I, if I go multiple drinks of brown liquor that uh, sets the tone wow. for a different kind of evening. Yeah. I mean, when Jamie and I go out to dinner, generally, we will always start with uh, a round of sparkling or sparkling rosé. Um, just to kind of, you know, like we were saying, set the table, get your body and mind in that space where it's like, okay, you're going to start switching on to the heavier things. And it's, and it's not like starting with a shot where you're just like, we're going <laughs> zero yeah. to 60 in one second. Like, it's a nice way to ease in. But I will say this, we should do an episode with champagne or sparkling where we each, and this is something I've never, never, ever, ever done. And I really want to do it where we each attempt to savor a bottle. Ah, I love this idea. I've uh, seen so many different people and see if they want to do, you know, if they wanted to be, if they want to participate, you know, because yeah. I tell you, again, like, Doing a champagne, either vertical or, you know, flight is really incredible. I, I had no idea the nuance of flavors yeah. and aromas and the different grapes and the different processes until I visited the Schramsberg. And now I'm like, I'm, I'm all in on it. So that could be a well, cool thing. Because think about it, like you'll drink wine every night or a couple times a week, right? So you have some sort of basis to compare the wine you're drinking yeah. to the other ones you don't most people don't have sparkling wine or champagne very often you yeah. know once um a quarter I, I don't even know like not very like special occasions right so because, when you taste it you're just like oh this is champagne you're not you're not really seeing that nuance or the differences but when you're there like in a curated tasting where the guy is walking you through it like it's really nice to see those differences because it's wine, just like Cab, Pinot, it's, it's a grape, you know, and it does have those differences and it does have all those differentiating things about it. It's, it's really interesting and, and you're absolutely right, DR. Like we should definitely do, we should try to reach out to some of these uh, sparkling wine um, vineyards in California. Maybe it's Carneros or Schramsberg or Mum or whoever, you know, like it'd be really great. I also cannot wait until, um, you know, we can get out to these regions again and, uh, you know, have a couple beverages. There was a, uh, DR, what was the, we were in Oregon. Remember when we went to, uh, when we, we did the show in Oregon and we went to the. Oh the, yeah, we went to, what Pino? was the name of that place? We both ended up buying several bottles. It was, it, was it, was it Eugene? No, uh, no it was, uh, it was, no, it was, it was that outdoor venue where it ended up being like 95 degrees in yeah. the shade at showtime, which was at like eight o'clock. Yes, 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 yes. But we went. That was in Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Jacksonville, Oregon. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So we went and drank some Pinots and it was, it was awesome. Yeah. I don't know why I thought of that, but I did. Um, but back to uh, sparkling, I think we should definitely do a sparkling episode. I'm a little Love nervous it. about savoring. I'm just not gonna lie, because I feel like I'll screw it up. But I mean, I'll go all in. Well, if we end up doing like, if we end up doing a couple bottles, then you can savor one, maybe. I definitely would love to try it. So and you don't you even need to get a bottle of something inexpensive to attempt to save her. <laughs> like a so the videos I've seen, like if you go like on TikTok or, or Instagram and watch some of these videos, they're not even using, they're not using swords and stuff. They're using a wine glass, right? It's all about the friction you cause. Here, let me use this empty bottle. So what they do is basically view this as like the bottom of a wine glass. They create the friction here which I think activates the, the gases inside the bottle. I'm making all this up. I'm not Bill Nye. But they just kind of activate it and then just gently flick the top mm -hmm. and it just goes exploding off, like in a super clean break. Mm -hmm. um, 
I just really want to try it. I've never done it. Pressure and friction, and yeah. it just let the, the let the science it takes the, handle it, 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 it right? The lap off, it takes the cork off, everything yep. goes off. Believe in science because it'll lead you to the right the right answer, right? <laughs> so that's that's what I love about it because it's not like you don't. And when you uh, a common misconception is the people that do use the actual sabers. Like most people would think, oh, use the sharp side. No, use the blunt side of the saber catch because that's, what it, that's what's going to create the most friction and catch this lip, right? This, obviously, it's not a champagne bottle, but this would catch this lip more cleanly compared to the sharp side of a saber. So I've watched so many, so many videos of this. So I'm like, I feel like I'm super well-versed in sabering champagne bottles without ever having done it. I've seen a lot of fails where somebody's got like some huge bottle, like a Jeroboam or whatever you call them. And they're like, trying, it's like a Dom, a big thing of Dom. And they like fumble it and the whole thing explodes. <laughs> Those are funny. Amazing. Well, let's not do Jeroboams. Let's uh, do regular 750. Yeah. The French Laundry that somebody posted yeah, on Instagram. It was. And, you know, the, the bro goes in to Sabre and just explodes you know, and it was all over, all over yeah, totally. went all over everywhere. And I think maybe I have a little bit of fear and apprehension after seeing those. And I'm like, here's, you know, a major wine dude who should probably know how to saber because he's sabering at the French laundry and butchers the whole thing. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to butcher this. And, you know, here's what we do. Here's what we do. We go to a grocery store, we buy a couple of bottles of cheap stuff and we practice. So we're ready. Who owns a saber, by yeah, the way? We film, them, we film them practicing just in case there's a hilarious fail, which there will yeah, likely you don't, be. You don't need the saber. Just use a regular wine glass. Use the, the bottom of the glass. Yeah. But Sa Saber as a, like a verb for what you're actually doing. Sabre. Sabre. Not, not for, using an actual saber. For the office fans. But I just had this idea. First live episode, French Laundry. Real Wine Bros. <laughs> Whoa. Other side. That would be fun. No wives. <laughs> what? Half the price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sellable? Have either no. have either either of you guys been? No. I have not, no. Man. We, we might make this happen. I wanna go. I've been wanting to go ever since I've known about Friends Landry. So Same. Same. it's uh, it's on the list. With not even we'll make it, we'll make a trip. We'll coordinate with French Laundry. Have you been to Alinea? We'll I've not been to Alinea, and they're actually delivering. Uh, they're doing home deliveries right now. Yeah, don't um, do that. That's something that I keep meaning to bring up with my wife, and then I, you know, get sidetracked with all the things. Question. No, you don't. You don't want your first experience at Alinea to be carry out. You need to not at all. <laughs> Wait, actually, uh, my friends have done it multiple times, and they say it's outstanding. I'm sure it is, but you want the full experience, right? No, I mean, obviously, it's not the it's not the same thing, but yeah. So, we're taping this on National Burger Day. Did you guys eat burgers today? No, I didn't know that. I did not have a burger today. I had chicken. That, uh, we'll chalk that up to a casualty of COVID. Also, there's too many days. There's too many this day and, yeah. and that day. Like, it's, it's too many. Week, which I accidentally drank a Chardonnay on. <laughs> yeah, right. Totally, totally planned. Totally, the totally calendar different. circled. You sent out invites. <laughs> you guys well, we didn't need to, uh, Chardonnay. Did you, did you have a burger? I did not. So, I mean, I was just seeing if you guys did. Um, I did not. I'm, I'm doing... Uh, uh, some barbecue chicken uh, tonight. So that's actually uh, this is the uh, this is the latest we've ever recorded one of these. So it's actually at an appropriate time to be drinking for Brits. Yeah, yeah, it is. Normally, yeah. I'm I'm on the earlier side, and I have to get back to. <laughs> um, we already ate. We had uh, some salmon. Oh, nice grilled salmon, grilled green beans, and uh, um, grilled green beans. Yeah, I threw, just threw them in my grill basket for the uh, grill. Uh, and, uh, the French kind, the long ones? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. They turned out really well. I liked them. I think if I did it again, I had them at the high heat, uh, the same heat as the salmon 
for and it ended up being way longer than the salmon obviously i think i would do those differently i would do them at a a, a medium high heat um but still for the same length of time ended up being about 30 minutes nice we had i had a pretty um by pretty i mean crazy intense grease fire on my grill <laughs> on memorial day like to the point where you know the first time I read a grease fire on my grill, I panicked and I didn't know what to do. And I was like, oh, let me just turn it all off and pour water on it. Nope. Um, but since then, you know, I've learned, you know, what you do, you close it, turn everything off, let the oxygen cut off, the flames will die. This was insane. Like I literally turned off the burners, closed, closed the lid of the grill. The, bur the temperature gauge on the grill went to the max in like a second and a half. It was <laughs> utterly insane. I thought my house was gonna burn down. So quickly, I went back to my Boy Scout training. And I was like, baking soda, I need baking soda. Ran inside the house, grabbed the box of baking soda, dumped it all over the grill, fire went out, but my grill's completely destroyed. I've got a company, <laughs> oh, no. I've got a company coming out next <laughs> week to, to get it back to you know where it needs to be. But man, it was, it was really intense. I, I couldn't believe how crazy the, the flames got. And it was, you know, luckily no one was around to see because, you know, Jamie and the kids would have probably her. freaked out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was internally freaking out, but luckily I was a Boy Scout and remembered that baking soda would kill fire. So I was like, boom. When you said that, I was, I was suddenly very concerned for you. But I'm glad that you were able to figure it out. I'm not completely useless. <laughs> well, since you had already said that you're not Bill Nye, I was very worried when you, when you said that. <laughs> so what I did was I went and grabbed a bunch of water. No, trust me, I made that mistake a long time ago. And I was like, water puts out fire. Firemen do it. Yeah. No. So we've got we've got a couple themes. We might have to do some theme dealers choices. I like the the anything goes concept, so we can do those too. But I think doing a theme dealers choice with some some sparkling would be a really good idea. Um, you know, maybe after our next uh, our next tasting, because our next tasting is going to be awesome. Uh, Rudy Zadima uh, is going to be joining us. We're going to be tasting some Grenache um, and Grenache Rosé. What are you doing on this episode? On this, uh, I don't think we've had a Grenache. Yet. Not had a Grenache. Not at all. Not even in a blend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it's going to be it's going to be fun. Uh, Rudy's a great dude. Uh, also a great chef. So that's going to be um, a ton of fun coming up here. And then we're going to do something with Brasswood. We got a bunch of fun people on deck uh, to do tastings with, and you know, listen, you know, I think we just hit the tip of the iceberg on the amount of uh, folks we can reach out to. So, um, you know, it seems like people are crazy enough to want to drink wine with us. So we're just going to keep going. Let's keep going. We should we should almost draw straws on regions for the next dealer's choice if it's going to be sparkling. Well. Put a couple different regions in a hat and draw straws and do it that way. That way, you know, because obviously if we we're just going to the store to buy some, obviously options are limited. But, you know, if we have time to plan, we can order ahead. I think it'd be really fun. Let's do it. I'm in. Well, right. I think, uh, Britt, while you were gone, that it was interesting that we all had um, uh, something from a different region tonight. Oh, yeah. That's kind of cool. Sure. Yeah, all of us did. Without planning, again, we didn't talk Without about planning. this. Um, I love it, dude. Well, gents, this was a blast as always. Yeah. Cheers, um, boys. Pleasure. Absolutely. We'll Ooh, do it again. Yeah, I need to go get some more. Just give a, give a recap of what you're drinking again. Show your bottle. All right. Uh, my wife took the bottle. It's the Moet Imperial Brute. Who was that? <laughs> the Moet. Oh, my. <laughs> we didn't want to hear the wine again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, guys. All right, cheers. cheers, man. And cheers to the anniversary right. of you proposing. Yes. Thank you. Smartest thing ever did. True story. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>